Welcome to Brain Info Live for everyone in the brain health community. Brain Info Live is about hope, health, support, education, and you. Whether you're living with Alzheimer's or a caregiver, family member, or loved one of someone who is, Brain Info Live is here for everybody. Oh, there you go. I have unmuted myself. Uh, hello. Uh, this is a, uh, Dr. Trin, Chief Medical Officer of Irvine Clinical Research. Uh, welcome back. This is our 17th episode of uh, Brain Info Live program in Southern California. Today, we're going to talk all about Medicare, and we'll be touching on some basics about what it is, uh, what the costs are associated with Medicare, uh, how to decide uh, what path is best for you, and uh, how you can get some more information as well. So with that said, let's get a jump start on uh, this episode with John Lewis, also known as uh, J. Lou, the fitness guru from Atlanta, Georgia. Hey, I'm J. Lou, your fitness guru. I want to welcome you to Brain Info Live today. We're going to do dumbbell body sculpting. So I need you to get ready in five seconds. Five, four, three, two, and one. Okay? Let's get started. I want your hands in a hammer position, and we're just going to tap. You ready? Let's go. Come on, five, six, 
body sculpting with a little lower body, and plus I added a little bit of core in there. I'm J. Lou, your fitness guru, and see you later, bye. All right, that was J. Lou. And uh, now we're going to show you some video clips from uh, Medicareful to go over what Medicare is and what it's uh, all the different parts of Medicare. So let's go ahead and watch it now. Your Medicare plan is out there. Let's find it together. Well, what exactly is Medicare? Medicare is a federal program that provides health insurance for people ages 65 and older and those with certain disabilities. How does it work? Let's start with the basics. There are four different parts to Medicare, plus another optional component we'll talk about later. We'll begin with original Medicare, made up of parts A and B. Part A is your hospital insurance. This helps pay for inpatient stays, skilled nursing facilities, and hospice care. Part B is your medical insurance. This covers things like doctor visits, ambulance rides, lab tests, and medical equipment such as wheelchairs. What about the other parts? There's also Part D, an optional prescription drug plan that's separate from Original Medicare. Each plan defines a list of covered drugs and the pharmacies where you can get them. Wait, did you skip a letter? We didn't forget about Part C, more commonly known as Medicare Advantage. Private insurers offer these plans as an alternative to Original Medicare. They provide all necessary coverage in one convenient plan and with only one card to keep track of. Most Medicare Advantage plans also include prescription drug coverage and other added benefits like dental, vision, hearing, and even fitness memberships. But Medicare Advantage plans aren't the only way to get additional coverage. Medigap plans, also called Medicare supplements, help cover the co-pays and deductibles that Original Medicare doesn't pay for. These plans are sold by private insurers, but the various plan types are standardized by the government. These supplemental plans can only be combined with Original Medicare, meaning you can choose Medicare Advantage or Medicare Supplements but not both. So there you have it, the A, B, C's, and D of Medicare. All right, great. We are back. I would like to welcome uh, you guys to uh, meet Jose Juarez, my good friend. Jose is a Medicare specialist from a Memorial Care Medical Group a physician organization established to advance comprehensive, effective, and efficient care delivery for uh, our patients. And Memorial Care Medical Group uh, includes uh, close to 100 physicians uh, throughout the uh, Southern California area here in the areas of uh, internal medicine, family medicine, peds, geriatrics, and multiple other uh, specialists. And uh, uh, if you guys don't already know, I am a Memorial Care physician myself. And I also wear the uh, a health a health plan hat uh, as the CMO of a health plan uh, called Estiva Health. So, very interested specifically in uh, this topic. Uh, Jose, welcome to the show. Hi, Dr. Trent. Thank you so much for having me. Looking forward to it. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting that uh, we're actually chatting on this this different uh, show and and. And channel because I see you off and on uh, throughout the week with uh, in person <laughs> with lectures. Yep, no, so, I, it's, it's it's neat though, right? Thank thank goodness for technology. Absolutely. So uh, first things first, uh, it's open enrollment for Medicare. Uh, what does that mean, Jose? What does open enrollment mean, and what's kind of like the the time frame of open enrollment, and what happens if you miss it, and things of that sort. Yeah, no, so that's that's a great question, Dr. Trent. So right now it's, it's considered open enrollment for those uh, that are Medicare recipients um, who are already on a Medicare plan, right? Me uh, open enrollment starts from October 15th through December 7th. If you're new into Medicare, right, you're just turning 65, um, the, the timeline is a little different for you, 
right? You have three months before your birthday, the month of your birthday, or three months after your birthday to apply for Medicare. Also, if you move counties, right, that, that it falls under a special enrollment, which will give you another opportunity to, it opens a window for, and you have 63 days to, to notify Medicare that you moved counties. I see. So what happens if you don't enroll by the deadline of open enrollment, like December 7th or oh, something like that? Yeah. So if you're already on a Medicare plan and you, you missed it or, you know, you forgot about it, it um, you're mm -hmm. pretty much going to be auto enrolled to your to your current plan. So you really don't have to miss yes. anything. If you're, if you're turning 65 and you forget to enroll mm -hmm. because you're healthy, you know, you're ready to go to the doctor's office. Um, there's a 10 percent penalty every year that you miss your enrollment period. Yeah, Ooh. you don't want to do that. And in addition to the penalty for Part B, there's a penalty for, for Part D, drug plan, if you don't enroll into Medicare. I see. When you say 10% penalty, what does that mean? You have to write them a check for 10% or does it get deducted somewhere? What does that mean? Yeah, so that's a great question. Uh, the 10% is actually calculated based on your, on your uh, gross income. Um, and mm -hmm. it's automatically deducted from your Social Security. I see. So this is somehow connected with Social Security with that. That's correct. I see. So so let's say Social Security called me about Medicare and I was busy working and I already had some other insurance at the time. Um, can I get Medicare if it's been, you know, years after that? when I had my other insurance when I was working or how does that work? Am I stuck to that other insurance that, you know, I'm 66 years old and I'm working and I've got like Blue Cross or Kaiser or whatever it is. Uh, can I still get Medicare or is that, how does that happen? I mean, I don't understand how all that's connected. Yeah. So actually you, you can do um, one or the other, right? You can either stay on your employer's plan on your employer's insurance and uh, now going to Medicare. Um, I always recommend, mm -hmm. um, you know, Medicare recipients to do a plan comparison, right? Compare your current plan, compare the benefits, the cost, and then look at the Medicare option, right? If it makes sense, not only financially, but the benefits look better and you're getting more, um, you can, you know, you choose one or the other. You won't get penalized as long as you have mm -hmm. um, coverage through your employer. I see. What are the costs to being part of Medicare? Is there a breakdown of the costs to participate with Medicare? Yeah, so the cost is, is very important. And a lot of people don't, don't know that income plays a big factor when it comes to costs. So part A is uh, there is no cost to part A. Part A is hospitals. Part B, on the other hand, has a, a annual or I'm sorry, not an annual, but it has a monthly premium. Uh, it is based on income. For 2023 is $164.12 or something like that. Um, obviously, if you make more money, your Part B premium is going to be more. I see. Is that premium something you have to write a check for, or is it deducted from like your Social Security every month? Or how does that work? Yep. So um, the premium is automatically deducted from your Social Security. If uh, you worked for the government or, or, a te or uh, you're a teacher and you paid into a pension um, and then you pay Social Security quarterly. Hmm. Okay. Right? So you have to pay. Yeah, you have to write a check yeah. to Social Security quarterly. I see. So let's say I'm older and I'm not really tech savvy. I don't know how to navigate on Medicare's, you know, website and things of that sort. Uh, how do I get information about Medicare when I'm older and not tech savvy? Is there a number I can call or can I contact you or how does that work? Yeah, so you can call me. Um, any forms, any uh, applications, pretty much anything that you need. Uh, I can email them to you. I can mail them to you. Uh, and pretty much guide you through the whole process because, you know, it is a lot of research. Um, and then that's the thing is that it's mind blowing, right? Is that when you're a senior, um, you have all the research, you have to do all the research yourself, you know, of, of what's a medical group, uh, what's a health plan, mm -hmm. 
Um, you know, your, your max amount of pockets, the part C, what's a Medicare supplement plan. I mean, there's so many options that it, it's, it's very overwhelming. Yeah. I mean, it's overwhelming for me and I'm in charge of a health plan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here's okay. Let's say I'm a homemaker and I've, I've never been employed or had a job where I'm contributing to Medicare or Social Security. Uh, do I have to enter the workforce in order to get Medicare? Or what happens if I've never contributed to Social Security or, or Medicare? Yeah, so if you're a homemaker and uh, if you're married, right, obviously your, your hours will count because you're spouse and you qualify for Medicare. If you got paid under the table, right, that's a... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, a way of saying it cash. Uh, unfortunately yeah cash you you need to work your social security um and for medicare it's 40 credits which which is equivalent to about 10 years uh, in order for you to have 100 percent of medicare if not there's going to be a share of cost and you're going to be paying a higher premium uh, for a and b wow so to get the full benefits of Medicare, you need to be in the workforce for 10 years. Approximately 10 years, uh, which is equal to 40 credits. Yeah. Wow. Does that 10 years have to be continuous or can I work for like two years here and then stayed home and then work another two years here? It sounds like it adds up to 10 years. Yeah, that's correct. You can uh, two years here, two years there, as long as uh, everything it equals to 40, 40 credits. I see. That's interesting. I don't think most of America knows that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and if That's you don't, beautiful. it's very expensive. Yeah. Yes, I see. Um, what if I don't have money to pay for this monthly premium? Uh, is there anything I can do if I'm broke and don't have, you know, I can't pay the premium? Yeah. So you can actually apply for Medi-Cal, right? It's a state... Uh, it's a state funded uh, um, insurance. It's um, a Medi-Cal okay. and uh, it does vary by county. Benefits do vary by county and Medi-Cal. If you qualify for hundred percent of Medi-Cal, they will help you pay for your part B premium and mm. offer you additional benefits. Oh, wow. So how do you qualify for Medi-Cal? So depending on the, on the county you live, right? Uh, for instance, I'm just going to talk here in, in Orange County. You go to Cal Optima. Yeah. That's uh, the Medi-Cal, mm -hmm. um, and they're here in Orange. So you can go on to their office or go on their website and apply for Medi-Cal. And, like, what's the eligibility for Medi-Cal? Like, do you have to make under a certain dollar amount, or how, how do you qualify that's correct. So that that changes every year, um, obviously, because of the cost of living these days. Right. So income qualifications are going up for 2023. I don't have the numbers yet. Um, mm. But it, for Medi-Cal, they're very I mean, obviously, it's for, for people that are on poverty level. Right. So you don't have a house. You don't have a 401k, um, you know, no mutual funds, no pensions, anything like that. I think the most you can have on, in your check-ins account, it's two thousand dollars or eighteen hundred dollars um mm. and that's the only way of, of qualifying for medi-cal there's another one it's lis low income subsidy that uh, this mm. program will help you pay for prescriptions um income does play a role but it it, it doesn't qualify as medi-cal wow so there's a separate program that helps with prescription if you're a candidate for medi-cal right well there's an addition to it Right, because uh, if you apply for Medi-Cal and if you don't qualify, um, you can try mm -hmm. LIS. Uh, income qualifications wow. are a little higher. You you can't own a home, mm -hmm. um, so assets mm -hmm. do play a role, but it's, it's not as as strict as Medi-Cal. I see. So, what's the difference between Medicare and Medi-Cal? Do they work together? Do they work separately? Yeah. So the difference is uh, so Medi-Cal is is uh, it's funded by through the state. And Medicare is funded through um, the federal, right? Anybody that's 65 or, or has been, um, um, oh man, that's a, that word. Um, mm -hmm. Older? Oh, yeah. So if you're, if you're 65 or older, um, right. that's how you qualify for Medicare. 
uh, when, when you have both Medicare and Medi-Cal, there are health plans that you can combine both, right? Um, and at a, zero, at, at a zero premium. I see. All right, good to know. So if I'm still confused about all this and have more questions about this, what should I do? Who should I contact? So you can call me. Uh, like I said, I can walk you through, educate you as much as I, as I can. Um, there's really good websites out there like medicare.gov that you can go into. Mm -hmm. um, you can pretty much shop around and see, especially if you take prescriptions, right? Type in those, those prescriptions on there and uh, you'll, you'll get a list of the, the most competitive uh, plans in your area. Um, but yeah, you can always give me a call um, and I'll walk you through it. Any questions, concerns you may have, I'll be more than happy to help you. Oh, wow. Cool. What's, uh, what's your number? Do you want to tell us your number so we can call you? Yeah, so you can call me at 714-640-7158 or you can email me at jjuarez number two at memorialcare.org. So that's jjuarez2 at memorialcare.org. I see. Or we can call you. But we, we shouldn't be calling you at midnight though, right? No. <laughs> no, if you call me at midnight, it better be for a happy hour, Dr. Train. Happy hour or party. <laughs> okay, great. Well, um, this is really good info, uh, Jose, for, uh, for many here. Um, now, if there's one thing you can you want to emphasize about Medicare that, uh, that we may or may not have already talked about, uh, what would that be? You know, it, it, it's very important that you shop around every year. Even if you're happy with your current plan now, um, it, 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 every year the, the benefits get better you get more um you know and, and another thing too a lot of people don't know is that with uh, if you're not happy with your current medical group or your doctor you can change medical groups year round right hmm. uh, right now open enrollment's coming to an end december 7th um so i highly suggest you know medications change too right all of a sudden maybe you're taking a, another medication that you weren't before uh, and now you're paying a little more money um, so please mm. shop around every year. If obviously the plan that you're currently on now, um, it makes more sense. And, you know, obviously you don't have to change, but if dental, maybe, maybe something that uh, you're in need or vision, uh, there's plans out there that are, are giving $2,500 as a reimbursement benefit for dental, right? Wow. So you can utilize this money for, for implants, deep cleaning, root canals, um, for a crown. Um, and these plans are giving you this, this, this great benefit. That's yeah. amazing. So, so what is better, part A and B or part C and D? So with original Medicare, A and B, it, it's probably the most expensive option, right? Because it's only 80-20. 80, 80, Medicare covers 80% and then you're going to be liable for 20. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, you go to the, the, the hospital these days and the, the, I mean, just for a day, maybe you're spending about $100,000. Um, so you're wow. going to be paying twenty thousand dollars of that, plus your you know copays and all these other um, other fees, versus a Medicare Advantage plan. Um, you know it, it's one hundred sixty four dollars. You get vision, dental, hearing aids, transportation, worldwide coverage, gym membership, over the counter benefit. So you get all these additional benefits, um, and then there's also the supplemental plans, right? The Medigap plans, because as, as as great as these HMO plans, um, you know. Also, it's not going to be a fit for everyone, right? The, versus the supplemental plan, it's probably one. It, it's a little more pricey, but you do get the flexibility and freedom to see any primary care doctor, any specialist. Um, you don't need a referral, right? Um, mm. But like I said, that's going to be probably the, an expensive option. But you are going to have the flexibility and freedom to to pretty much see anybody. I see. Good info. Uh, tell us a little bit about Memorial Care. Why, what's so special about Memorial Care? I know we're throughout Southern California. Yeah, so Memorial Care is uh, one of the largest medical groups in Orange County. Um, and, you know, it, I, I've worked at other medical groups, and, and not just because I work for Memorial Care, but um, seeing, you know, the referral process that, that we have, um, all of our physicians, including you, Dr. Trent, <laughs> um, uh, everybody's amazing. Um, you know, most of our locations have x-rays, labs, pharmacy on site. We have um, in-person or virtual doctor appointments, even urgent care. 
And then you have me as your personal representative, right? So if you have any questions, concerns, you want to check the status of our referral, um, you call me directly. I won't give you an 800 number. You can call me on my cell phone um, and, and I'll be more than happy to assist you. Very cool. That's the best part about Memorial Care, Jose, is that uh, you get Jose. <laughs> That's right. Just kidding. <laughs> All right, Jose. Hey, thanks so much for uh, for joining us today. Really valuable information on Medicare and what it covers and the costs and also on Medi-Cal as well and the, the differences. Um, so open enrollment uh, is... Uh, few more days right and then uh then it ends i think it ends december 7th so for That's most correct. of you who are still thinking about a decision to join a uh a health plan or a medical group and all that or especially a health plan you got to december 7th uh to make that decision and so we got about uh some time here uh of course we're speaking today and it's uh, december 1st so it may be late by the time some of you guys watch this, but uh, but that's kind of the open enrollment deadlines uh, with that. Thanks, Jose, for coming on. Uh, appreciate it, and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you so much, Dr. Trin. All right. Chat later, Jose. <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, that was Jose. Uh, awesome guy. Good friend. And uh, let's see what you guys have learned. Uh, let me do a quick poll here. And... Uh, and see what you guys have learned. And so here it is. On what day does Medicare open enrollment end? Is it today, which is December 1st, uh, live? Is it next Wednesday, December 7th? Is it uh, on Christmas Day, December 25th? Or is it New Year's Eve, uh, December 31st? Uh, when does uh, when does open enrollment end, you guys? Is it today? Uh, is it December seventh? Is it uh, Christmas, December twenty fifth, or New Year's Eve, December thirty first? What do you guys think? Uh, type in your answer. When does open enrollment end? <laughs> All right. Okay, you guys are smart. It ends on December 7th. So uh, so that's, uh, I think uh, that's on a regular yearly basis. Uh, open enrollment ends. Uh, it opens up for a few weeks and it closes on December 7th, and uh, which is uh, this coming Wednesday. All right, guys. Um, I'm going to introduce you to some uh, national and local resources that uh, we'll share with you guys. Uh, these resources, along with others, will be emailed to uh, everyone who signed up for today's program. And uh, if you haven't signed up to receive our Brain Health, uh, Brain Info Live emails yet, you can do so uh, by going on to this website here. It's uh, https uh, colon forward slash forward slash bit.ly forward slash bil sign up. So uh, once more to get on our mailing list, it's um, uh, here it is, uh, https uh, colon forward slash forward slash bit.ly forward slash bil sign up to get on our mailing list, guys. And uh, I want to thank you. Uh, thank you to uh, Jose. Thank you to John Lewis. And thank you to you, the viewers. Until next time. See you later. Thank you.